everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and boy what a video to put out there. Missile tanks. They're still providing great content for all type of YouTubers. However, a serious note. RIP World of Tanks Blitz 2014 to 2020. You were good fun. I mean really come on. However, the hate is real guys. It's palpable. I mean you can cut the air with a knife. I mean, really, it is that bad. And it's it's the last time I saw division in a community like this was, well, Brexit. <laughs> you're either a Lever or a Remainer. If you're a Remainer, then all the Levers were completely as stupid morons. And if you were a Lever, then all the Remainers were completely stupid morons. And there was no sort of middle ground. And this is sort of what's happening with these tanks. That there is, there's becoming a distinct camp and there is I'm sorry I have to say this there seems to be a concerted effort to get rid of them um, you know and then I've seen the comments either in discord or on YouTube or in forums that this tank these two tanks are killing the game that unless wargaming remove these tanks blitz will die well I, I think that's a, you know a bit overcooked as a statement, to be perfectly honest and frank with you, I don't think these two tanks necessarily will kill the game, but I'll get on to that a bit later. So, I mean, it, there's no doubt that these tanks have upset the apple cart. They were always going to be controversial. I mean, even when they were announced, people were scratching their heads wondering if it would work. And Wargaming had to sort of go out there out on a limb and say, look guys, it's not like the T-49A which everybody hated because it was a stupid tank but it was it was a fun tank it was only meant to be a bit of a fun and you know it was a testing ground realistically for wargaming to see if missiles of that caliber would ever make it into the game and clearly you know that was a disaster but they finally made it into the game so when they were announced they were controversial and people said they had no right to be here but now they're here and they're in the game and Boy, has it upset the balance. Literally. I am. Um, I mean, the status quo has seriously been shaken up. And a lot of people are unhappy. And I'm trying to work out why they are unhappy. So let's have a look at some of the basics. The T92, that's this little tier 9 here. Yes, it is OP. I mean, you can't escape it. It's OP. But... Is it just because of the missiles? Well, I would argue no. I mean, the APCR on this thing is crazily mad. You've got a light tank sat in tier 9 that can pen the front of a mouse <laughs> without really breaking into a sweat. I mean, that's just wrong and obscene. And I'm not even talking about the missiles here, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Not only that, the, the front glacius plate... Yeah, it seems to be a little bit bouncy for a light tank. It, it really does. And the loadout is massive. I mean, you can get a lot of shells into this thing. What about the Sheridan? Well, again, the Sheridan on the APCR, boy, it's a powerful gun. And again, as a light tank, you know, it's got a big loadout. And uh, it, it's got not so much trolley armor as the T-92, to be perfectly honest with you. And then we come to the main problem that everybody bemoans, and that is the missiles. Oh my golly, golly gosh, missiles. Now, they're not easy to use, let's be honest. You will, you can search through the internet and you will find replay after replay of people throwing these things up in the air and, you know, killing tanks from across the map. Yes, it does happen. I will not dispute that, of course it happens. But is that the exception or the rule? Now, from what I can tell, people think it's the rule, and yeah, I've looked at a lot of the replays. And to be honest with you, a lot of the players are not using the missiles as regularly as we expect. They are using the APCR, and they are using the missile on occasion to, you know, maximum effect. Which is what, in my understanding, which was what Wargaming actually intended. So, is the missile thing sort of being overcooked somewhat? I appreciate that people don't like the fact that you can th fling them round corners, and I'll get to that later. But, 
are these tanks broken because of the missiles or are they just broken? Now, I'm falling into the latter category where I think it's not the missiles that make these tanks broken. The tanks are just broken full stop. Um, I mean, take the missiles away. You could roll out on this thing with just with, without the missiles and you could roll out with just the APCR and the HE and you will still be devastating is, is my view regardless of whether you've got missiles loaded. That's what makes it broken to an extent. Now, it's very rare that I say a tank is OP, unless it's the Keniotsu, which is clearly a broken tank. Because I generally find it's not the tank that's broken, it's the individual. But in this case, the penetration values and the damage output on the APCR is absolutely ridiculous. Now, to their credit, Wargaming are nerfing them. I mean, they only just came out, and in 6.8, they're being nerfed. And what they're going to do on both tanks, the 152mm APCR shell will have its pen reduced. Now, I don't think they've gone enough, but they're going to reduce it from 240 down to 230. I mean, I think it should be reduced from 240 to 220, but that's just me. They've not talked about removing the damage on the APCR, which I think is a mistake. They have, however, decided to nerf the heat penetration from 340 to 310, which I think is, again, probably not enough, should probably go down from 340 to 300, but at least they've recognized it needs a pretty decent nerf. And they've also nerfed its damage from 560 to 490. Now, the damage I agree with, by the way, but the pen, well, the pen is a bit of a difficult one because missiles and even rockets, if you wanted to have rockets, do have better penetration than standard ammunition because of the high velocity that, they, that they're fired at. I do think they should nerf the APCR damage. It is ridiculously high and it needs to come down. And you know, that may be a solution to the, the, the current problem. Also, with the T-92, they are nerfing the front glacius plate. It's going down from 76 millimeters to 52 millimeters. So, Wargaming are certainly looking to try and address the issue. I mean, this is the quickest sort of nerf I've seen since I've been playing the game since 2014. Um, because there's a lot of heat out there, then there's a lot of hate. I mean, they're really is a lot of hate. And I don't quite see where the hate is coming from because lots of tanks come out and are, are, are sort of OP and need to be nerfed in time. And the thing about these two tanks are they've come out and automatically people hate them. Simple. Now, why do they hate them? Well, they hate them because you can do this with missiles. But as I said, you know, you, you, it's very rare that all your missiles are going to do this. In fact, you'll you know you'll tend to find that if you fired seven missiles, only three of them are going to hit. But you can do that. You can aim it completely in the opposite direction, fire the tank, and sort of track it onto its target. And that's what is effectively pissing a lot of people off. Like watch this with the grill. Goodbye grill. Boom. And I get that. I understand that. And you know, but it's not an easy mechanic to master. It really is not easy to do those type of shots. Uh, if you think it is, then okay, fair enough, good for you. But it's not. You know, it's 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 very very difficult, um, and you've got to be super super dexterous to do it. But you know, people can do it. But I don't think it's. I think it's more of an exception rather than the rule. Nevertheless, it's caused a lot of pain. It's caused a lot of upset. And I understand that pain and upset. I also understand that with the current damage penetration outputs and the mechanics of the tank, it has a knock-on effect for tournaments. Because, you know, if, if you roll out in a Tier 10 tournament, chances are you can roll out in five Sheridans, um, a Yeageru or a 183, and a Batchat. And just sit them all at the back and get the Batchat to spot everybody up and just plough them full of full of rockets, but it's not going to work, is it? But it will shake up tournaments to an extent. So, you know, I understand the, the, the feeling behind some of these tanks, 
and the concern well I understand the concerns I don't understand the feelings but I understand the concerns the thing I don't understand is where people are saying that the tanks need to be removed from the game completely now that is a view I do not subscribe to and the reason I don't subscribe to it is because it's nice having another light tank in tier 10 and it's nice having a light tank in the American tech tree in both tier 9 and tier 10 I like that it's a great thing put more light tanks into the game I say at the higher tiers so I don't want these tanks removed I, I welcome the the nerf that is coming in 6.8 I don't think it's gone far enough but maybe you know Wargaming will review the data and maybe nerf it again slightly and tweak it a bit more in 6.9 if it gets to 6.9 not might, might just go to 7.0 who knows then it comes to the missile. I mean, should they change the mechanics? Well, you know, let's look at it from a logical viewpoint. In real life, you can't... These missiles are very versatile. And any army in the world would die, would do anything to get a missile like this. Such a versatile missile. You know, missiles in real life are either a fly-by-wire, which means they're line of sight only, or the ones that are laser guided, you generally have some guy sat near the target with the rain, with the laser rangefinder thingy actually lighting the target up all the way through. We don't have either of that here. We don't have line of sight missiles and we don't have to have the laser on the target at all stages. And anyway, the laser that laser system doesn't really work particularly well in tanks, funnily enough. It works much better on helicopters and aeroplanes than it does in tanks. So, you know, in, in that respect, the, the, the meta is slightly broken. The mechanic of it is broken because it shouldn't be that you can, you can sort of ballet dance a missile round rocks and stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong, in real life, if you're sat behind a rock and there's a, a guy with an anti-tank gun, he's going to get you. Why? Well, he's going to take his anti-tank missile and he's going to blow the rock up. And then the second shot is going to blow you up. So it is possible. But, uh, you know, the, the ballet dancing over the top of them, well, that's just daft. And that needs to be looked at. So I'm thinking, well, maybe, you know, with the proposed, well, it's not a proposed nerf, it's an actual nerf. With the nerf, followed by maybe changing the parameters of the missile to line of sight, much like a conventional round, Maybe that will just relieve the problem and stop the issue. I do think we're, it's, it's, it's going far too far to turn around and say, get them out of the game completely. I, I don't subscribe to that view. I really, really don't. Well, now, a couple of other things I just want to point out when it comes to these tanks. Firstly, I am not an official community contributor I'm a guy who just runs a very small YouTube channel that deals with blitz and occasional history so you know I'm not employed by wargaming I don't have access to all the official CCs and what they think and what they discuss etc etc this is just my opinion um, but and this is important guys because I want all of you to remember this no matter who you are no matter what your skill level is no matter what your win rate is and no matter how long you've been playing this game, you are entitled to your opinion. Just because I'm saying this doesn't mean to say I'm right. Just the same way as that, you know, some other YouTubers may say something completely different doesn't necessarily make them right either. Guys, you are equally as important as the rest of us. Your wallet is equally as important as my wallet and the next man's wallet. So... Just because you have a different opinion to somebody doesn't mean you can't voice that opinion. Now, that's not a dig at anybody before anybody asks or anybody points fingers. I'm not having a dig at anybody. I'm having a dig at no. I'm not having a dig at the official community contributors. I'm not having a dig at fellow YouTubers. I generally agree with all the YouTubers because it's their opinion and they're entitled to give their opinion. If my opinion differs, if my view differs, then I will debate with them. I won't throw my toys out the pram and say, I'm not talking to you, you're a complete fool. I won't tell people, this guy's talking shit, don't listen to him, because that's not the way I operate. Basically, my view is my view, their view is their view, 
and never the twain and and you know normally you 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 know they'll give me the reasons for their view and I'll give them the reasons for my view and eventually something will happen either one of us is right one of us is wrong or we or you know there's a compromise in the middle so that's number one number two I am not a super unicorn player. I am never going to set the World of Tanks Blitz game on fire. I am an average player at best. But that's the thing. The majority of this game base is comprised of average players, not super duper unicorns or those in the top clans. I will never be a super duper unicorn and I will never be a member of a top clan. And, you know, I'm satisfied and happy with my lot in life, funnily enough. You know, it's not, that's not my ambition. My ambition is to enjoy the game for what it is, to enjoy the game because I do enjoy the game, and to blow shit up. And, you know, I'm a, it's like the Joker in The Dark Knight. I'm a man of simple tastes. You know, I, I just want to log in, get in a tank, and blow stuff up. And you know what? I don't care if that tank's a tier 1 or a tier 10. I don't give a damn because... I just want to play a game. I don't do it competitively, as in professionally, and I don't do it. Uh, my ambition is not to have the best win rate in Blitz, because it's never going to happen. So my ambition is pretty straightforward. I just want to enjoy the game for what it is. And I embrace change, funnily enough. And I've embraced these tanks. I haven't played them as much as I, I should, but I've embraced them. Um, and I think that, you know, they're new, and being new, there's a lot of focus on them, I get that. And being new, everybody's playing them, I get that. And being new, players don't know how to counter them yet. Now, you know, from what I've seen in some of the games, they're not that difficult to counter. In fact, I went on to Blitz Stars earlier, and I know, you know, you could look at stats through the yin-yang, and you only get basic stats in Blitz Stars anyway. But the T92 is not the best win rate tank in its tier. That belongs to the standard B. And the Sheridan is certainly not the biggest, you know, damage monster out there, average, average damage per game, nor is it the best win rate. Again, it's, it's beaten quite convincingly, by the projector. So the auto-loading auto-loaders are equally broken, are they not? Because, you know, those tanks are wiping the floor and the standard B, let's be fair, is wiping the floor in tier eight as well as tier, tier nine. Okay, it comes a bit unstuck at tier 10, whereas the T92 doesn't. And I get that, which is why I think the T92 is broken, but I think the Sheridan is a different beast. And it's, it's a different, okay, it has the same bloody gun, I get that, but it's a different beast because the sh where the T92 is not out of place in tier 10, it also has that tier eight that it can go down and absolutely decimate and dominate. The Sheridan doesn't have that luxury. The Sheridan is okay in tier 10 and is okay in tier nine doesn't have that further lower tier to go down to. That's why, in my view, it's a bit of a different beastie. All in all, I, I think this is realistically a storm in a teacup. It will be addressed one way or the other. I do not subscribe to having the tanks removed from the game. I think we should let the dust settle a little bit, let Wargaming do what they need to do, and let's, let's, let's revisit it after they've done the nerf and after update 6.8. And then, if they're still dominating, propose other changes. Anyway, I've been fooded. Hopefully, I can put to bed now the whinging about the missile tanks from my side. I don't want to do another one of these until after they've been nerfed in 6.8. I, I know there's still a lot of noise out there. I, I get that, I understand that. I would say, to people realistically to stop focusing on purely the negatives look at some of the positives as well don't automatically rule out the fact that war gaming probably don't know what they're doing of course they do it's their business they don't want to see it suffer 
give them the opportunity, give the player base the opportunity to let these tanks settle in a bit more, not just from the fact that players can play them, but also that players can counter them and defeat them and understand their weaknesses. Because there are weaknesses with these tanks. They're not super, super invincible, which many people are sort of, which, which a lot of things are pointing towards. You know, you're not guaranteed to win in this thing. You're not guaranteed to get Raz medals every time you roll out in it by sitting at the back of the map. If that was the case, we would have seen those replays by now. We've seen games where a few shots have been taken from the back of the map. Realistically, come on guys, let's be real about this. Let, let's not knee-jerk react with everything. I look forward to the nerf on both tanks. I don't think it's gone far enough, but I look forward to the nerf. I look forward to seeing what that will do. And I will, re I will reserve my opinion on whether or not the missiles need to be retinkered with after the update. Anyway, I hope this will put to bed some of the hatred. I've been Fujit. That's been, it's not a rant. I've not ranted, to be honest with you. It's been my soapbox though, on missile tanks current state. I don't think they're the death of Blitz at the moment, with respect. Um, I think that is knee jerk. I think they have shaken up the status quo. I get that. They've unbalanced the comfort zones of many. I get that. But they're not the death of the game. I don't think, anyway. By all means, comment and all the rest of it below. Um, you know, I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. Better still, come and join me in the, uh, in the coffee chat that we've got on Saturday and, and air your views there. You can follow me... You know, you can send your replays to me at foodsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord server and upload them there. And until the next time, stay safe out there, guys. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because you know what? That is what it's all about, guys. It's a game. Have fun and be happy.